Well, hello lovelies. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my hands. Um, and welcome to Cozy Core Craft INT. And I started this channel with the intention of just having it um, for shorts because I didn't know what I could commit to. But then as April went by, I had uh, a lot of cool things that I experienced and that I really wanted to share. And I thought that the best format for sharing that would be to do kind of like a peek back at the month. So let's have a peek back at my April. I wanted to talk to you today about books that I read and loved, uh, YouTube stuff that I love, of course decks, uh, some playlists, I do do crochet as well, um, and some podcasts that I love. So let's jump right in, we'll start with books. So um, full disclosure, I'm not technically finished this book yet, but there's three epilogues and I'm on the second one. So <laughs> I feel pretty confident saying um, it was incredible. So this is actually a fanfic. Um, this is a Draco and Hermione um, Harry Potter slash Handmaid's Tale fanfic. This is my first fanfic that I've ever read. Um, and of course it's called Manacled, as you can see. Um, the author is Sinlin Yu. And this is a long book to me anyways. This is, I think technically, if it's in physical format, about 900 pages. Um, but this is basically a story about uh, Draco and Hermione. Um, this is, I think, about six years after uh, Harry Potter as we know it ends, so they're adults now. There is a war between um, Voldemort and his world and then the Order of the Phoenix. Um, Hermione is obviously on the Order of the Phoenix side, whereas Draco is on the Voldemort side. Um, and they find themselves brought together by the circumstances of the war. So I don't want to go too much into it. Um, it is a romance. It is definitely extremely dark. Um, the author has a ton of trigger warnings in it, but I am obsessed with it. I'm really shocked how much I love it, um, being that it's my first fanfic I've ever read, but it is so far, unless something happens in the last two epilogues, but <laughs> it is one of the best books I've ever read easily. So highly recommend um, if you're into dark romance. Um, even if you're not into Harry Potter, I mean I still think it's great, um, but obviously having that love for the original story helps a lot. But anyways, this is incredible. It is free. Um, I'll link everything of course uh, that I chat about if I can, but you can very easily download the EPUB version of this and email it to your Kindle if you have one. And I am just now kind of obsessed with fanfic, so highly recommend. Another book that I read and absolutely loved was Maya Banks Never Seduces Scott. This is the first book in a series by her. I forget. Oh, it's The Montgomery's and the Armstrong. She says right there. Um, this is a really beautiful story about a heroine who is deaf, um, but of course being in the time period that this is set in, there's not a ton of awareness or knowledge or anything like that. So they do um, treat her poorly in a lot of circumstances because they don't understand what she's going through um, and she's not totally open about her condition either for reasons that are pretty valid. And our hero is just the sweetest, most tender, but still very strong alpha male type of hero. So if you're into those type of couples, this is an awesome story. But this is just like a very sweet, tender, historical Highlander romance. I love it. I will definitely read more from this author. This was the first book that I read from her, but it was great. It was steamy. It was sweet. Just super, super heartwarming. Then, as we will get into, um, one of the decks that I worked with this month was the Antique Anatomy Tarot. So I did read the guidebook. I read it from front to back. I have had this deck for a really, really long time, but hip and uh, and or Marseille type of decks, which will be, again, relevant later in the video, um, are not my go-to. I'm not super comfortable, but I've always been super intrigued. This one specifically, just because the art is so gorgeous in the deck. And I've actually heard a lot of really good things about the guidebook. So I read through it cover to cover. It is awesome. I think personally, as someone who is a beginner for with, with pip decks and reading like numerologically and with color and stuff like that, this was a great intro. I really felt like I got a good grasp on it and it made me want to continue working with these type of systems, especially with this deck. I really, really loved it. So highly recommend. Another book that I got this month is Joy of the Journey Devotional, Morning and Evening. So this was actually sent to me as a gift by a dear friend. 
and it's not something that it's a daily devotional so it's thick it's something that you read every day there is a passage that you read for the morning and then one you're supposed to read at night but i keep forgetting at night but i have been reading it every morning they're dated and um they're just a really oh my little alien um they're just a really really beautiful way to start the day so the morning um piece is a piece of writing and then the evening piece is actually biblical references but um again i haven't been getting to those because i just keep forgetting um but I've been really, really loving this, and I hope it's something, I, I really do think it's something that I will continue to constantly go to, um, hopefully for years and years to come. So love, love, love this. And then I thought I'd talk about two books that I started reading. So I just started this one. So this is Funny Feelings by Tara DeWitt, and this is a contemporary romance um, about two comedians. And so far, the story jumps right in. Um, they already have a working relationship in that our hero is our heroine's manager. And she's gotten an opportunity, a career opportunity, that um, they're suggesting is going to require her to fake date her manager. Obviously, it's going to result in them falling for each other. There's already feelings there, but I'm assuming that they haven't pulled the trigger on the feelings because of their working relationship and a lot of other reasons. But um, he's also a single father. Um, his daughter is deaf and um, so far it's just a very heartwarming, beautiful story. And I saved it for April because I just, the rain, I was like, April showers. <laughs> I thought it would seasonally be a really good vibe and I'm loving it so far. So hopefully next month I will be able to update you further on this one. And then I also started You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay. This is a book that I've had for a really long time and I've kind of flipped through it before because there is parts of it that are like charts. Oh, I flipped right, through, right to it. Um, that kind of give you ideas of um, healing that you could do for different aspects of your life. So, um, and physically as well as mentally, I believe. But the way that the author talks about this book and suggests that you read it is slowly. So um, I've just read the first chapter and she says to sit with it with, for two or three days. So that's what I've been doing. Or that's, again, only one chapter in, but that's what I will continue to do. So I am really excited about this. I love stuff like this. And I don't know how many chapters are in it. <laughs> Good check. So it looks like there's 15 chapters. So next month I'll probably give you an update. I have already been highlighting quite a bit in here. Um, so anyways, I will keep you posted on how this one goes, but I don't think I'll finish it within a month. So for YouTube, obviously me creating this channel is exciting. <laughs> Some other things that I've been loving on YouTube, um, my boyfriend and I have been spending a lot of time watching these like kind of conspiracy theory or dark web or kind of like paranormal themed YouTube channels um, or like mystery, like kind of short story mystery type of channels. So some of them are barely sociable. That's one that we've been absolutely loving. We've also been watching a lot of Nightmare Expo, Mr. Nightmare. If there's any other ones that I can think of, I'll throw them down in the description. But if you're into kind of uh, dark web conspiracy theory, dark, spooky, scary, mysterious stuff, it's a really great, great way to spend some time. So um, yeah, we've, we've been really loving those. Um, some of them are, are quite dark, but you know how our culture is. We have this fascinating fascination with murder mystery and all this kind of stuff and kind of, I guess, like the extremes of the human experience and the human psyche. So knocking my little guy here. Um, but anyways, yeah, so that's been really fun. I also found a really great crochet channel called CJ Design. And this is one that I've just been um, going through her videos and looking at projects that I might want to attempt in the future and things like that. So I am very excited about that one. Also, if you're following me at all, you saw that I did uh, Lisa's 21 tarot questions tag in my shorts. I don't know about the format of that. Let me know if um, doing the tags in that shorts format in, in parts is entertaining um, or if it's just annoying <laughs> having to come back like seven times to see the conclusion of a tag. But I did really enjoy that. And that was kind of like the jump off for me starting this channel, which is great. And I've loved watching all of the responses to that. It was really cool. I also came across this channel called Mr. Chill Lo-Fi and it is like lo-fi playlists um, or songs that have really long run times, like 24 hours. But the video part of it is like The Simpsons. And <laughs> 
kind of just like a loop of like a very like soft animation on it. So I think I just saw like the image of Bart Simpson and clicked on it automatically. But then I saw that it was lo-fi playlist and I've really been loving those again, as you will see with another part of this video. And then a tarot channel that I came across this month that I've subscribed to and really like is Project Refine Life. So I just really like the vibe of her channel and the way that she talks about decks and her content and all that kind of stuff. So that one, that's one that's really pulled me in. Okay, so let's talk about decks. So at the beginning of the month, I chose four decks that I wanted to kind of focus on working with. So one of them was the Dreaming Way Tarot, the other one was the Nature Speak Oracle, the Forest Fae Oracle, and then the Antique Anatomy Tarot. So I'll first talk about the two that I picked and didn't work with at all. So <laughs> was the Dreaming Way. And this is kind of surprising because this is one of my favorite decks. And when I was kind of looking for decks that I thought would have like a good vibe for the month of April, because the way that I work with tarot is extremely seasonal. I basically have my collection broken into two um, halves that are light half of the year and dark half of the year. So I wanted to use um, this deck alongside the Nature Speak Oracle um, in a kind of Don Michelle inspired way in the sense that I like when she does like the three oracles to kind of create a guide for the reading and then um, pull the tarot cards with them or under them, which I did do with some other set decks, which I'll show you. Um, I don't know why I didn't pull this one. I think it was, well, I know why. It's because I was distracted by other things, but it is uh, in no way because this deck isn't awesome. Um, it just, like I said, I just, I got distracted. I'm a Gemini, like that's my whole life. But this deck is awesome and I'm sure I will come back to it again at some point this spring or summer um and this is one that I do just pull sometimes anyways just for general readings and stuff like that this one's kind of always available and at hand and I love it very much so the oracle and again like this is not uh, this is a deck that I've used um the nature speak oracle obviously um, this is one that I've used many, many times. I've had it for many years. I love it a lot. So it's nothing about the deck, I'll show you the facts, um, as to why I didn't work with it. Um, it was just, I got distracted by other things, new and shiny things. How do we get rid of that light? I'll have to figure that out on a different video. <laughs> We've come too far. But um, yeah, this is a great oracle. I do think that it would have worked really well for the purpose that I wanted to use it for, which is like I said, kind of pulling three cards here. I guess we'll just do it now. Um, again, this is Don Michelle inspired. I cannot take credit for this and kind of looking at them and saying, okay, these are the three elements that we're going to read on. So for this one, we have veils parting, rare opportunity, flowing and evolving. And then what we would do is pull three tarot cards along with that. So we have Death, Six of Pentacles, and Two of Pentacles. And again, in my amateur way of making YouTube videos, let's just move these. Um, <laughs> thank you for your patience. Um, we would kind of look at them like that or maybe easier so that we could actually see the messages here would be like this. So Veils, Parting, and Death. Okay, makes sense. Rare Opportunity, Six of Pentacles an opportunity to give love that and then we have flowing and evolving and the two of pentacles and maybe it's evolving in ways to have some more balance in our lives so anyways again I, like even just doing that now makes me kind of wish that I would have worked with these ones more but it is what it is the ones that I did work with um, were the Forest Fate Oracle. This is one that I just, I really, really love a lot. This is such a cute little oracle. I love these little characters and the illustrations. It just gives me like labyrinth, dark crystal kind of vibes. And the messages are super, super cute. So the way that I use this one is I would literally just every morning um, as I'm sitting down having my coffee, pull a card and kind of just sit with the message for a little bit and try to, you know, remember it throughout the day and think of it throughout the day. So it was really cute. And uh, I love this one a lot. It's a very, very sweet little guy. Facts are super cute too. And then of course, as I was saying before, I really loved working with the Antique Anatomy. So the way that I ended up using this one was... Um, 
three card draws for the most part. And I did reference the guidebook, uh, I think, every single time that I used it. So I would love to continue, I will continue reading with it. And I hope I get to a point where I can uh, use it without the guidebook. And when I picked this one for the month, my intention was to use it with the Forest Fate Oracle and kind of do like a one of these kind of little jams where we have our little fairy guys in the middle and then we're using them to read like this. I still think they look nice together. I guess it's because they have like a similar background and lots of plants and stuff like that with our little fairies. Anyways, I, I didn't actually end up using it like this, but again, like just doing that little, little demo kind of makes me want to come back to trying to use it that way. So those were the decks that I intended to use this month, and this is one of the decks that pulled me away from <laughs> some of the ones that I wanted to spend some time with. I got this in the mail, uh, Squid Cake Marseille Tarot. I did a little short on this one. I cannot believe how beautiful the packaging and production is on this. The guidebook is amazing. Um, this was totally a Lisa Pepez made me do it purchase. Um, Cause as I said, I am not like a Marseille person. Um, sorry, the edging is just everything. It just reminds me of like candy. Backs are adorable. And so the way that Lisa talked about this made me want to give it a shot. And it was because of the way that she talked about the guidebook that made me want to try to read with it. And I do have a couple books on Marseille and Pip that I haven't read yet, but I do intend to. So I always kind of intended to explore this system, but this deck made it feel like it was Marseille with training wheels. Um, and that just made it feel very, very approachable. I love the color on it. Um, I had seen this deck before and I didn't love the imagery in the sense that I don't really usually feel drawn to like people in decks that feel modern. So like modern clothes and stuff like that, modern haircuts or whatever. But I guess because this world is like not, it's fantastical obviously. I mean, yes, t-shirts are real, but uh, giant frogs that we can ride on, unfortunately are not. So I think that's why this one is kind of working for me and it's not pulling me too much into the real world. I think when I say that I don't usually love decks that feel like they feature modern people or real wor world scenarios, it's because then I tend to focus too much on the specifics of that instead of the kind of bigger picture of my reading, if that makes any sense. So anyways, this one just totally distracted me, stole my heart, and I love it. So this little gummy bear tarot is one that I've been carrying around with me and I, mean, I do work from home most days but um, when I do leave my house I have been throwing this little guy in my bag. I love the tarot's in a tin and I just love it's a, it's, it's a rider weight clone and I just thought it was super super cute. It gives me kind of like retro vibes for some reason. I, I I always like think of the Grateful Dead when I <laughs> see this deck and I know like gummy bears are not that don't have anything to do with the Grateful Dead but they do have the little Grateful Dead bears so I think that's why and um, yeah so it just kind of has like that energy of it within the deck which is for some reason appealing to me but it's cute as hell and uh, it's been awesome to throw in my bag. I love that it's a Rider weight clone, super easy to read. Super, super cute, adorable little backs. Listen, a lot of my tarot practice is inspired by Jean Michel and Lisa Pettis and a few other creators I'm sure I will talk about at some point. But this deck, oh sorry, I showed the box, but the Mother Mary Oracle. So this is one that I have been keeping at my bedside and trying to remember every night to pull a card, but um, they just have these really beautiful little messages on the back. And the art is gorgeous. It's just like a very soothing, comforting deck. And you know, if you have a lot of things floating around in your brain when you go to bed at night, which I definitely do, I'm sure most people do, to try to, you know, replace it with something like one of these messages and kind of fall asleep with something really beautiful and healing in your mind, I think is awesome. So I have been loving that one. Uh, this is the, I think it's called a pocket or something like that. It's the small size version of it. 
So I was also lucky enough to sit down with um, some family and friends at different points and read for them, which is not something that I, you know, often make an effort to do um, or do formally or anything like that. But, you know, when it comes up, I always have a good time doing it. So um, there's a couple pairs that I have to share with you. So the first one is a pair that I was using for kind of like relationship or romantic readings. This is also the first ever um, pouch that I've ever made. <laughs> well, I've only ever really finished one, which is this one. But this is like a single crochet stitch. Um, I started learning crochet at the beginning of this year. Um, so I wanted this to be one of those kind of, you can spread it out. Sorry, I'll figure out this camera stuff one day. Um, but spread it out, pull your cards out of the pocket, and then kind of lay them down like this. Anyways, I'll show you the actual deck. Oh, and one thing I had to figure out with crochet, if anyone here, I need to find a way to better stitch up my ends here, because this one's kind of coming apart a little bit. So, you live and learn. So, this is the oracle that I was using um, out of the pair for these kind of love or relationship readings. So this is the inner compass oracle. I do have the other inner, this is the love one, which has like the brownish red backs. And then there is a different one that has navy blue backs. That is kind of just like a general oracle. But this one um, is great for those type of readings. I love the imagery on here. It's just gorgeous and minimalist, nice and simple, clean easy peasy but again so the way that I was doing this was pulling three cards for myself or whoever I was reading with and one of the fun things was you know my friends and family that I was doing this with they are not you know card readers um but we would do this and then I would say okay now you do me and we would just have fun with it we didn't take it too seriously but the tarot deck that I was pairing with this which has been working really really beautifully is the Tarot of Light, which I'm sure as most of you know looks like this. So this is a awesome deck. Um, it's, uh, I could see, you know, people thinking it's a little bit nice washed, which is fine. Um, I think, you know, those decks have a place and this is a great spot for this one. Although it does have, you know, of course, some hard hitting or um, challenging messages or ideas to it, which is also great. So yeah, the way that we were doing this is we would pull our three little oracles and then we would pull our tarot cards with them. And the messages seem to line up really beautifully. Let's see what they did this time. So we have communication and surrender. And then we have clean slate and mysticism. Okay. And then we have receive and guardian receive protection and have someone look out for you i don't know about the other ones but um those have been an awesome pairing and we had a ton of fun with them the last pairing that i kept getting pulled into using this month was the morgan's tarot and morgan's morgan's um tarot which is not a tarot it's an oracle and the Everyday Witch Tarot. So I'll show you this one first. And so yeah, this is again one that I was using um, whenever, you know, friends and or family were over and then we were just having some fun with cards. So this one, when I first got it, I was like, this is stupid. Those are the backs. Um, and a lot of these, you know, keywords or messages don't make a ton of sense. And I still like this one, like this hasn't come up in, a reading for me but if it did I don't know what I would do um, but some of them are really great so yeah using this one kind of in the same way and the guidebook in this one isn't it doesn't really help a ton it's uh, still like a little bit obscure it's, it's on brand that's what I'll say it's on brand for what the deck is but we would pull three of those and then the classic, of course, Little Everyday Witch Tarot, which I love. This is one that I've had for years. I got this right at the kind of the beginning of my journey using tarot and um, never really let it go. So yeah, we would just go like that. We would pull three and three, and then we would look at them and say, okay, the Virgin Sun Queen, what the heck does that mean with strength? I mean, Honestly, I'm getting nothing from that one, but I do think they look kind of cool together. <laughs> I have to sit with them for a few minutes. And then we have Ball, 
and the Hermit, again, pretty obscure. And then we have Whatever's Right and the Tower. That one actually feels like it would kind of, the messages make sense together. So anyways, I thought that that was a really cool pairing. I really uh, enjoyed it. And um, unfortunately, or fortunately, I guess, unfortunately for us here today, um, these messages didn't make a ton of sense. But when I did use it with my friends and family, it was great, I promise. Okay, so I also wanted to talk about playlists because I almost always have music playing. So there was a few playlists that I listened to almost constantly in April, um, and I probably will continue to, but one was the Lord of the Rings Lo-Fi Study playlist. I used that when I was working a lot. There is a Reiki healing playlist on Spotify, which is awesome, and I would put that on like just throughout the day when I'm cleaning, stuff like that. There's also a playlist that I use sometimes when I'm working called Kundalini Vibes. This is put together by Amberly Lyons, who is from Chakra Girl. And that was pretty much it for playlists, but I would highly, highly recommend those ones. So I thought I would um, continue by uh, giving kind of updates on my crochet journey. So what I've been doing is um, I made, like I said, that first pouch using the single crochet stitch to practice it. And then I was like, okay, I want to practice the half double crochet. So I'll make a pouch doing that. So I haven't sewn this one up yet. I still have the little stitch markers in there to hold it together. But I did the same kind of thing where I made just like a long uh, rectangle. And then I'm going to fold it up, stitch up the sides so that we can just roll it up and use it as like a reading cloth slash pouch. Eventually when I get like a little bit this yarn isn't like the best quality. I just use it for practice. Um, same with the color. I'm not like in love with the color or anything. I just wanted something that I could easily see the stitches with. But this is gonna turn into home for my little owl tarot. Wisdom of the owls? I forget what it is. Um, as much as I love the Llewellyn boxes, I think that they are, you know, production-wise gorgeous. They're just not practical for me in the way that I store things in my home and things like that. So. I'm making, okay, so if things look a little bit different, it's because they are. It is a new day. I ran out of batteries and of course my spare battery uh, for my camera was dead. So anyways, um, that's why maybe the lighting looks different or um, what have you. But anyways, I was talking about the fact that I was making a home for my Wisdom of the Owls Tarot there. Now I know what it's called because I looked it up. Um, but anyways, yeah, I, I do love this little deck. It's super, super cute. I haven't worked with it a ton. I do want to really get into the guidebook because I love the uh, guidebooks that Llewellyn puts out, especially by these authors. So yeah, very excited to make a sweet little home for this one. Okay, so the last thing that I wanted to share was a few podcasts that I really loved. So this is one um, that I come back to quite often, but I did listen to um, more episodes than normal <laughs> uh, this month. And that is the Nothing Much Happens podcast, Bedtime Stories to Help You Sleep. This is a beautiful podcast where the creator writes and records all of her own um, adult -y. I mean, it's not adult-like adult adult kids can listen to it too it's not inappropriate or anything like that but it's just these beautiful little stories about her grabbing you know tea with a friend or baking a pie or something like very pure and mundane and uh, it's just a very soothing way to help yourself fall asleep real quick another podcast that i listen to quite regularly is beyond the self with africa brooke but the episode that i particularly loved this month was episode number 47, it's time to reintroduce yourself, no more hiding. And I took notes while listening to this one. It was awesome. I would highly recommend it. I just love Africa so much. I love everything that she puts out, all of her thoughts and her philosophies, anything she recommends, I will consume it. I had kind of picked through her episodes and listened to ones that kind of caught my attention, but I did start from the very beginning and started listening from episode number one. And again, like I just... I really have to actively listen to her episodes because I feel like she has so much great information and I just want to take notes the entire time. So love that one. And then another podcast that I've been, again, listening to for years, but this episode, particularly this month, really stuck with me. And that is Shocker Girl Radio. And the episode was episode number 252, which was Monica Yates healing your masculine, masculine to flow in your feminine. It was 
beautiful and uh, very thought provoking. So that is everything that I have to share this month. That is a peek back at what my April looked like. I hope you enjoyed. I love watching these type of videos, so that's why I was kind of inspired to share it and just my excitement for the things that I got to enjoy this month. Everything that I mentioned, I will throw links for down in the description. And if you liked hanging out with me, like, subscribe, please comment. I would love to chat with you guys and hear your thoughts on anything that I mentioned. And until next time, take care. Bye.